The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Clark County, Nevada, on your new fire apparatus, job number 32286. Please utilize this five-digit number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Let's start down at the front bumper area. Just underneath the front bumper, you'll find two open-ended tow hooks on the right and left side. Moving up onto the face of the bumper, you'll find your electronic siren and PA speaker mounted on both the passenger and driver side. You'll also find just inward of that location on the passenger and driver side, your air horns. Moving up to the center, you'll find your tub storage location here for your front bumper load. And moving all the way to the driver's side, up on top of the bumper, you'll find your mechanical siren. Moving up onto the body of the apparatus, on the right and left side, you'll find your turn indicator. Just inward of that location, you're going to find the headlight cluster housing the low and high beam. High beam is located on the inside. Let's move up from that location. you find an emergency warning light cluster forward facing. And then we'll move all the way up to the very top, right and left side, you have your flat mirror, and then on the very top, your convexed mirror. Moving to the center of the apparatus, you'll find a forward-facing floodlight. Located on the brow of the apparatus, you'll find five running lights. And then moving further up to the top, you're going to find your Opticom located directly in the center. And then just uh, behind the Opticom, you'll find your emergency warning lights. Let's make a, a quick move to the side of the apparatus, the bumper extension. You'll find a warning light on the side. And then let's go ahead and look at the tub storage location. This is your front discharge. It has foam water capability, inch and a half swivel discharge. Moving to the outer edge, this is the driver's side. You'll find your mechanical siren and just up from that, your air intake. Onto the side of the apparatus, driver's side. When this light is illuminated, it means you're plugged into shore power, 20 amp shoreline inlet. And now we're moving to the pump area. First, let's go over some warning indicators. First, at the very top, entanglement hazard because of those hoses coming off. You'll also find a warning label here not to mix different batch uh, consistencies of foam and also brands. And then to the right, you're going to find a warning here regarding fall hazard and the uh, possibility of falling if you're riding on the side of the apparatus. And then to the left, you're going to find a warning here regarding pressurized caps and the associated hazards while removing those caps. In the upper left hand corner you'll find your number one discharge that's going to be in the pink color red and then just down from that you'll find the number three discharge that's going to be in the blue located in the center of the pierce logo american flag eagle is your large diameter intake moving up to the right you're going to find your auxiliary foam functions this is the strainer and film fill location to the right you'll find an air inlet and then let's move all the way down to the very bottom section here we'll cover some of these items first two and a half inch auxiliary inlet this is a female inlet and then down at the very bottom you'll find all your associated drains uh, with this area here's some close-ups of those images once again number one and number three driver's side discharges and then as we move to the right you'll find your auxiliary foam functions for foam inlet strainer and also your tank drains and down to the right you're going to find your driver's side auxiliary two and a half inch inlet we're going to move directly above that location. We're going to find first at the top the diamond plate cover. This is a backboard storage location. And then you have three speed loads located here. What I wanted to point out is at the very bottom of those speed loads, this is the release mechanism to allow you to release the speed loads uh, from their actual holder and remove them to the ground for loading of the hose. Quick picture at the top here for your backboard storage. And then let's go ahead and move through the pump controls, we'll identify some of those starting in the upper left-hand corner. First, with this manufacturer's recommendation that only trained personnel should operate this equipment only after receiving training and using the owner's manual. We'll also talk the placard just below that, and then we'll start in this very top section here with this light. If your pump is properly engaged, this light will illuminate, indicating your pump is engaged. Moving down from that location, you'll find your tank vision here. This is your foam A tank. It's the indication for how much foam is in that tank. Moving up to the top into the gray sections, you're going to find your master intake. Between the master intake and the master discharge, you'll find your test gauge ports for vacuum and pressure. They're currently plugged. And in the upper right, you're going to find your master discharge. 
Moving just outside of that area, you're going to find your PCM fault indicator. If lit, this will be an amber color. And then just beneath that, you'll find an audible alarm, which the outer edge of the bezel does have the ability to dampen that sound. Let's move down. You have a variety of discharges across. I don't need to label all those, but they are all foam capable. You can see with the uh, labeling. And then to the right, we'll talk a little bit about this, is your Pierce Throttle Pressure Governor. Let's start first in the upper right hand corner. This is the check engine light. If this was illuminated, it would be in amber. In the center, you'll find a digital readout for the RPMs. Moving to the right, you'll find if illuminated, a stop engine will be red. And then moving down just beneath that, you'll find all your engine diagnostic information. Down beneath that to the left side of this same module, you're gonna find your water tank level indicator from empty, quarter, half, three quarter to full. And to the right, you'll find a red silence button. Moving down, you'll find the menu button, which will allow you to scroll through the various menus. And then down in the lower left-hand corner, you're gonna find a uh, pressure control. The blue indicator will allow you to select between pressure control and throttle control. In the center, digital readout, and to the very far right, your RPM control. That's an either or, either pressure control or RPM control. And the blue uh, push button is how you operate that. Located in the center, you'll find an OK to engage the throttle. And then to the right, you'll find a green preset button for programming or presets that you've previously put into your system. Down in the very bottom, you'll find your throttle and also your idle button. Please see the owner's manual for more information on how to operate this pressure governor. Let's start in the upper left-hand corner. This is a twist, not a pull. This is your recirculating line. Moving down to the bottom section, you'll find your tank fill, tank to pump, and then your large diameter deluge discharge. Let's move to the right to the red module. The red module is going to be your Pierce foam system. We'll let this catch up for just a second here. I got a little ahead of myself. To the right, you'll find your driver's rear discharge. And then in the upper right hand corner, you're going to find a caution label here also for your uh, pull for your priming system. Just beneath that, the classification here for your Husky 12 foam system. These are the specification and instructions for that red module. You'll also find two electronic valves, first for the number two passenger side and for the large diameter discharge. On the lower left, you'll find your intake relief valve. It is adjustable. And then to the right, you'll find these, which are uh, real discharge, primer drain, and flush valve drain. Down at the bottom, you're going to find all of your associated drain valves for all of your discharges. We'll talk a little bit about to the right of that compartment. This is a pan door behind it. You're going to find your foam operations. This is the handle for horizontal fill operations or to fill, move the handle in the vertical position. Up from that, you're going to find your manual pump shift overrides, a protected switch, and an amber indicator if you've engaged it. Down at the very bottom, you're going to find, this is back up to the very top, you're going to find your minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 PSI. It has the GPMs on the left-hand side and your RPMs on the right-hand side. This is for when it was tested at the manufacturer. To the left-hand side of your pump panel, you'll find your driver's side floodlight, an air horn, which is the red switch, and also a real rewind. In the same compartment, you're going to find, if plugged into shore power, your auto charge 1200 will activate. And then you're also going to find this is your air compressor to maintain air brake. Let's go ahead and move through some of the compartments here. First, in front of and rear of the rear wheel, you'll find bottle storage locations. You'll also find your ultra low sulfur diesel fuel, that's the silver cap. As this flips down, you'll find it reveals the blue cap, which is your DEF 4.5 US gallon tank. As we move through the compartments, you're going to find LED lighting and the possibility of adjustable shelving. There's also dry deck material on the very bottom. As we look to the rear compartment, you'll find a de-handled tool board. To release that, twist the handle. When it's in the open position, it will lock. There is a release mechanism behind the hinge side of the uh, mechanism. Quick view of your apparatus from the side. Let's go ahead and move uh, further around the apparatus. We'll start in the upper section here. You do have emergency warning lights at the very top. And then just beneath that, you do have side facing floodlights. Let's go ahead and move now to the very rear section of your apparatus. Roll up compartment in the back. You're going to find a pull out sliding tray. Uh, the release mechanism is on the right. 
As we move through some of the other items, couple warning labels here. Because of those hoses coming out from an elevated position, there is the possibility of entanglement. That's what that warning label's for. This is also a pressure hazard warning uh, that those caps may be under pressure when removing the cap, remove with caution. To the right, you'll find a fall hazard not to ride on the back of the apparatus. Then you'll find your two discharges here, two and a half inch rear discharge. As we look to the uh, stairwell area as we climb aloft, you'll find additional LED lighting for stairs and also an emergency light. You have your hose bed lights and also your rear scene lights. These are the switches that will control on the left hand side of your apparatus. 24 foot extension ladder and a 14 foot roof ladder. Let's move just above the 24 foot and 14 foot roof ladder storage area. You're going to find a 10 foot attic and also long handled tool storage. On the passenger side, you're also going to find long handled tool storage. Moving just up onto the very top of the apparatus, this is your hose bed. There are hose dividers here, which are movable. As we move to the top, you'll find compartments on the right and left side. This is housing a uh, absorbent container. You'll also find additional LED lighting in all of your compartments above and also uh, dry deck material. Your foam fill for foam tank A and also your water tank fill for the top. Once again, LED lighting, dry deck material inside each of those side compartments. Let's go ahead and move to the dunnage area. This is the area that's going to have your master stream device and also your booster line. What we're pointing out here is the tensioning knob for that booster line. And then at the very top, you'll find the manual rewind in case there is some sort of mechanical failure with your reel. There's also a top mounted master reel rewind switch here. As we move to the front section of your cab, I would like to point out there are some warning labels here. This is a slippery surface and be cautious. Let's move to the uh, side section of your apparatus. We'll go through some of the compartments on this side of the apparatus. We're now moving down the passenger side. Same configuration as the driver's side. LED emergency lights at the top and also side facing floodlights. I would like to point out the exhaust is on this side. Extremely hot temperatures. Be cautious as to where you park your vehicle. As we move through some of the compartments here, you're going to find once again LED lighting and also that dry deck material. This is the location of your absorbent material discharge. Uh, let's move forward of this location. Uh, this is going to be uh, additional bottle storage and also your ultra low sulfur diesel fuel silver cap on the driver's side and passenger side. Just in front of the rear wheel, you'll find uh, additional bottle storage location. Directly over the rear wheel, you'll find additional storage location with this tray. And I'd like to point out in the upper right hand corner, there is a 12 volt uh, access point here for barrel style charging. We're to the pump area, first warning labels. Let's talk a little bit about those. Uh, once again, entanglement hazard. There's also the fall warning here, not to ride on the side of the apparatus. Also pressurized warning here regarding pressurized caps and the associated hazards while removing those caps. Let's move back up to the very top. This is going to be your water strainer. Moving further to the right, you're going to find two switches, uh, your reel rewind and also your passenger side uh, floodlight. Located in the center, you'll find your Pierce logo American flag and Eagle large diameter pump intake. To the right, you're going to find your cab lift. There are instructions here and warning information here on how to operate. As we move further down, you're going to find your passenger side discharge. Because this is an electronic valve, there is the requirement of an override here that you can manually control. Moving down in the green section, you'll find your large diameter discharge. And then this is on the passenger side. And then also, once again, an override because that's, once again, an electronic valve. Down at the very bottom, you're going to find your two and a half inch female passenger side intake. And then you're also going to find all your associated drains across the very bottom. Got a few close-ups of those images. Uh, first, your water strainer. As uh, we move to the right, you're going to find the real rewind switch and also the passenger side floodlight. And then further to the right, you're going to find your cab lift. There are raise instructions and also lowering instructions. Just make sure items are secured with inside your cab. Let's move now to the front section of the cab. Similar layout as the opposite side with the access to the cross lays. I would like to point out that there are points for grab handles for gaining access in and out of the cab on all points of entry for personnel. Quick look inside the cab here. We'll go through some of the items here. There are three seats across the very back of your apparatus. 
looking overhead, you'll find a fan. You'll also find your climate control adjustment knobs at the very top in the center. Here's the fan switches also. Moving to the seat section, you're going to find uh, additional uh, light boxes on the right and left side of the seats. And then looking forward, we're going to have your uh, 12 volt charging location at the very top of this compartment. And then at the very bottom, you'll find additional heater controls. Let's take a quick look from the rear section looking forward. And then we're going to now move to the passenger seat. There are a few safety themes, things I'd like to point out. First, warning labels here on the right-hand side. Uh, there's also some warning labels here regarding this area. Your vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system and airbag. That's why there's a warning sticker uh, labeled there. Be cautious not to mount any equipment within that vicinity. You do have a map book uh, location here. And also uh, you can see your SRS down in the lower right hand corner for your airbag. As we move to the center section, you'll find 12 volt USB style access. In the very front section, you'll find your vehicle data recorder. And then as we move back to the left hand side, kind of difficult to see in this image here, but there is a flapped access area. This is the access area where you'll find all of your additional fuse boxes and also access for uh, your technicians. There is a push to talk also for your radio located right at the convenience for the left hand side of the passenger. And as we look overhead of the passenger, you're going to find your unit radio and also a set of switches. We'll go over those here in the next set of images. First, this is going to be your unit radio. Moving to the left of this location, you're going to find a set of memory switches here. First, your air horn and also a siren brake. There are two future switch locations also that you'll see that are currently blank. And then also you have your front floodlight switch. Let's move further to the uh, right section. This is just a general view here. You can see you have push on and off red and white lights overhead, your David Clark headset system, and then all you also have access uh, to your transmission and oil fluid checks for daily checks. We're now in the driver's area. Once again, point out some of those warning labels here on the left hand side of all points of entry. We're also going to focus in on the right hand side about right ankle. There is also a manufactured by Pierce uh, placard. We'll talk about that. And then also the red safety seats for easy visible identification if people have their belts on. On the door itself, you're going to find the manufactured by Pierce placard. This is uh, your fluid capacities for the uh, fluid device and also fluid capacity. And then also you'll find the manufacturer date, job number. You're also going to find your gross vehicle weight rating. On that same placard, this is about right ankle location of the operator. You'll find that same information here. When plugged into shore power, your auto charger will activate. This is indicating the level of your battery system when charged for your batteries. Also at the left foot area, you're going to find a foot pedal for your mechanical siren. Moving up at about the left knee area, you'll find your driver's diagnostic port and also your command zone port. On the far left, you'll find an audible alarm. Once again, the outer edge of the bezel does allow you to increase or decrease the volume level by dampening. And you'll find your command zone connection module. Moving up uh, about uh, just to the left of the steering column, you're going to find your ignition, start, headlights, and panel dim switch. As we move through, you'll find across the very bottom your transmission, your oil, DEF level, fuel level, front and rear air. As we move up to the very top, you're going to find your water temperature, two large gauges in the center for your tachometer and speedometer, and then to the right, you'll find your voltage. There is also a placard on the right-hand side here in the dash. Let's talk about that next. This is the height of your apparatus, 11 feet, 5 inches. Length of your apparatus is 32 feet, 7 inches, and the gross vehicle weight rating of 46,800 pounds. It also has your job number located on it, that this is the number three apparatus, 32286-03, indicating there are three apparatuses of the same manufacturer make. To the right, you're going to find your uh, informational diagnostic information center, and then you'll also find a set of switches here for your perimeter lights, OK to engage the high idle and high idle engage, and then your fuel primer from future switches, and also a load manager. Let's move to the right of the apparatus operator. First, this is your Pierce command zone. A tremendous amount of information here right at your fingertips uh, to scroll through. Please see your owner's manual for more information on that. Just beneath that, you'll find your pull to apply your system parking brake, push to release. 
and then we'll talk about some of the other items as we move through on the left hand side here uh, starting with climate control at the very top set of switches here which uh, i've got a few close-ups here to make it a little bit easier so we can identify things but first let's start with your climate control uh, low medium and high and an off switch you also have uh, air conditioning and heat down to the next set of switches you'll find an indicator here for ok to engage or pump for rolling your water pump and your foam system and then all the way to the right you have your radio push to talk button let's move further down to the next set of switches We'll first start on the uh, engine brake on and off switch. That's going to be on the far left hand side. You do have a setting switch here for your engine brake for low, medium, or high settings. Uh, because your vehicle is equipped with airbags, you'll also find your SRS fault system if it's indicating a fault with your airbag. To the right, you'll find your DPF regen, inhibit, and your mirror heat. To the right, once again, your system parking brake, pull to apply, push to release. Down at the very bottom, you're going to find your Allison transmission pad with an indication here to pump in the neutral position. Moving to the right, you're going to find your pump pressure. This is a digital readout. And then further to the right, you'll find your water tank and also foam tank. These are the levels of those tanks. Let's move just to the rear section. You're going to find your main mirror control. And then to the right, you'll find your convex mirror control. Overhead of the operator, we're going to find a high intensity reading light at the very top. We'll cover those uh, set of switches here with the emergency master, roof light, front warning light, and side warning light. Moving down to the next section, you're going to find your lower rear warning, upper rear warning, a high beam flash, and then the control for your Opticom switch. Let's move further to the right to the next set of switches. You'll find an air horn control switch, electronic siren. You're also going to have a siren brake for that uh, mechanical siren. You have a front flood switch. Moving down to the left, at the bottom section, you're going to find your driver's side flood, passenger side flood, and rear flood. Moving slightly to the right, you're going to find your traffic advisor. And then moving further to the right from that traffic advisor is where you're going to find your unit radio and also your siren control and PA speaker. Congratulations, Clark County, Nevada, job number 32286. If you have any questions as to the content of this video, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.